Testing, testing. <laughs> I hear you. You sound good. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Traven Rice, and this is the Lowdown Culture Cast. And we're here on the Lower East Side at PT Knitwear, and it's a very rainy day. And I am delighted and honored and humbled to have with me today um, M.M. Sarah. And M.M. Sarah is an experimental <laughs> filmmaker, curator. Uh, experimental filmmaker, curator, author, and you are the executive director of Filmmakers Cooperative for three decades. Um, And Filmmakers Cooperative is the oldest and largest archive of independent media um, that we have, that we know of. And M.M. Sarah has had a long career making many, many independent, avant-garde, experimental films, as well as writing, studying, lecturing, and teaching. And preserving. And curating. And preserving. And preserving. Experimental film, avant-garde film. And I want to hear about all of these things. Um, A couple highlights, just to give you an idea. Um, In 2010, you co-curated Counterculture, Counter Cinema, an avant-garde film festival, which was a program... um, with the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. I know there was a big show at PS1, Contemporary Art Center, in um, a few years ago. And I know you have some work um, at MoMA. I know you had a film premiere at the Sundance Film Festival and at Tribeca. And um, I want to hear about all of these things, but I'd like to hear how you describe avant-garde and experimental film. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to meet you on this rainy, flooding day. And how I, definitions are important and they change over time. And I teach at the new school a class called Exploding Eye Avant Garden the Moving Image. And how I define avant garde is in ter- it's a French term for military soldiers that went before the army the soldier that walked into unexplored territory, that made the discovery of what was not known. And uh, if if, if he could lose his life, you know, took the major risk, the biggest risk. Mm -hmm. So when I designed the class, I looked for movements like Cubism, Dadaism, and also the, and building community. Mm-hmm. And artists, especially the film community, you don't work in isolation. Mm-hmm. You, it, it's always about building community, acting, um, whether it's editing, shooting, lighting. So that experimental came later, and that is experimental techniques. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. they have been done for decades, mm-hmm. like Man Ray experimental with salt, um, exposed film, s- film on strip. the actual celluloid. Yeah, and then he processed it, and uh, then it looked like big crystals and stars, mm-hmm. and you couldn't tell that it was made without a camera. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that experimentation still happens today. I teach non-camera filmmaking, so I'm repeating processes that yeah. have been done for decades. So let's go back a bit. Because speaking of community, and you know we're here on the Lower East Side neighborhood, and you have been here since when? For how long? I moved here in 1987, 86, mm. 87. Mm-hmm. And I moved to New York uh, for a number of reasons. I was making films in Los Angeles, um, studying with Shirley Clark, and Shirley Clark was a major influence on me. She had lived in New York, worked with Andy Warhol, and made short films. And I took a short filmmaking class, how to make a short film. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got an opportunity to study at New York University in the grad program, and also found an apartment, I thought New York is the place to make, and Jonas Mikas was here. Mm to make you know, experimental and study and yes. have a community. That's why I chose to come to New York, to work in independent film. I thought this was a really good place to do that, and there was a great history of that. So you were part of that early experimental, I would say, avant-garde wave of, of artists and filmmakers here. I would say so, and I would say that 
Also, the, uh, t um, when I came uh, and st oh, I was invited, someone came from Dresden after the wall went down. I put together a program of films, experimental films, and went to e what was Le East Germany, Dresden, Halle, Leipzig, Potsdam. They had never seen experimental independent film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had music because of Radio Free, M Free Music. Mm -hmm. They knew John Zorn. They knew avant-garde music, but it was the first time they were exposed to film. Oh, nice. I, and it was nice, and it was interesting to show it to a community that had never been Ex exposed. Experienced it. And, yeah. Sure. So can you tell us, if somebody did, who doesn't know, can you tell us what the Filmmakers Cooperative is? Uh, I met Jonas Mikas. I read, when I was studying with Shirley Clark, out in Los Angeles. Shirley Clark was one of the, f there were only four people to sign the Certificate of Incorporation for the organization in 1961. It was part of the counterculture. It was part of an international wave. There was a French new wave, mm -hmm. and it's the idea of against censorship, against the, um, it, it was part of the youth movement mm -hmm. and the beginning of 1959 birth control pills came mm. on the market. Mm. So it was the women's movement, the civil rights movement. And Jonas, uh, Hollywood had a license. You had to have a license to show a film and it had to be pre-screened and it's still that way. Mm -hmm. And the film co-op is artist-owned, artist-run. Everyone that works there or been involved, Jonas set it up that way. Yep that you would be uh, distributing, exhibiting, and publishing about these films, promoting and mm -hmm. forming the net part of a network. And Jonas Mikas is uh, responsible for the film anthology archives as well. Yes, and film culture. I read film culture, uh, um, a movie journal. When I was studying with Shirley Clark, part of teaching is not just that you show films, but you read about films. You read manifesto. Like this week, I showed um, my students Vertov, a man, uh, Ziga Vertov, the man with the movie camera, 1929. He wrote his manifesto, what he felt the power of the camera, mm -hmm. self reflexivity. Mm -hmm. So you're reading what his community, his council of three, who were working on his film, his team, mm -hmm. what they thought they were doing, mm -hmm. and what they wanted the spectator, you the viewer, and history to know about this film mm -hmm. process. So, uh, so what's your manifesto? My manifesto is uh, in that, the, uh, in my DVD collection. Mm -hmm. It's called Artcore, Avant-Garde, and the Moving Image. And that uh, Revoir and the Film Co-op actually sells them. I have 32 films. My manifesto is my name, first of all, M.M., is I grew up in a working class Italian neighborhood in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. And when um, the town no longer on the map, it had five factories. My parents were union organizers and so in the coal mines and factories. So uh, I wanted to, my mother had this Italian Bible. I wanted to be Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. and, my, and those big voluptuous bodies. <laughs> and what my manifesto was that I wanted to create, my name's Mary Magdalene, the woman of splashes other outside the heteronormative capitalist system. Mm -hmm. The iconoclastic. In a way, uh, it freed me to think and search and investigate not only my life, but the past, like I just got the Emily Harvey Venice residency. I went to Venice and uh, was researching Veronica Franco from the 16th century, who was a poet, a courtesan. Venice was known as the city of women because its oh. women were um, courtesans and cultural guides were women, but they were like high-end prostitutes. Uh -huh. And during the Inquisition and the plague, they put her on trial as a witch. Mm -hmm. So the idea of bringing forward women from the 16th century, 17th century, all these women I wanted to tie together to 
bring them to life into the 21st century to know. It's not like uh, pe the legacy is a one thing or one institution. It's how you can create and use your entire daily life to be creative. Mm -hmm. And you're and connecting these dots for us. You're connecting the dots between what has come before and, and how, it's, how, how it's influenced us now. And can infu influence us to do changes within our own culture and within our own life. And some of your films and your early films that you shared some of them with me, um, many, many, many of them feature women. They do. And, and were considered very radical, some of them. And still are considered very radical and can be censored. Uh, for instance, I did a film in, um, well, I shouldn't say this, but I shot a film uh, in this raw, empty space on Ludlow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it would be about um, Mary Magdalene and the woman who was wearing a corset but not a bra mm -hmm. was also, I had four camera women mm -hmm. and everyone was filming, including me. And she, and the use of mirrors, but one time you could see her hand me the camera and you could see her nipple. Uh -huh. And I didn't realize that it's illegal to show a nipple. And Is I that put, still true? I put it on Facebook and they took it down. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, so I, you find out. And then also the film itself is about, uh, it's shown, it showed at the... Uh, New York Foundation for the Arts Digital Facial Profiling about uh, women. Uh, it wasn't a program of women. It was about how what portraits are like and the difference of portraits. Mm -hmm. And it was in a large exhibition space. There were 14 people and two women. And then the installer said to me, uh, would you... I'm concerned there's a nipple there. And <laughs> this is an open space and kids could see it. And I said, well, why would, you know, a woman can be about nurturing. It's about nurturing, not just desire. Yeah. And What's would wrong you blur that nipple? nipple? Or if someone complains, I have to take it down. And this was 2016, so. We haven't come that far then. No, we haven't. But it's in our, our core is about. The core of your being, who you are, rather than a man, uh, body and soul, intellect and body, it's the unified. It's the soul, the self, and the intellect mm -hmm. the creating work. And did that, you did you come up with the term art core? I did. I, I came like up that. with the ter term because I had a show at Anthology Film Archives and showed a film that I like. It's early a film from 1993. It's a portrait of Tom Schmott and Ken Schmott, both of who had AIDS and Ken. And I showed it, and they are sexual practices in it. And Jonas said to me, I think that's porn. Is that pornography? And I thought, um, I better write and think this through so I can address this. Mm -hmm. Because if he who's seen it and promoted, he promoted everyone's work. He promoted my favorite film, Barbara Rubin's, um, it was called uh, Cox and Cunts when it was released. <laughs> I don't know if you'd say that. And then yeah. when it, Jonas put in distribution in 63, it became Christmas on Earth after Rambo's <laughs> song. <laughs> That's what yeah. the title changed to? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that's when I started to try to come clarify how I felt to liberate myself in language, not only create these images, but try to educate and talk about it and also help other, uh, other women that want to pick up a camera and film, be Michelangelo and David. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And because a lot of funding is for uh, uh, women artists, yes, they fund some women artists, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily women like uh, who uh, deal with the explicit body. 
Mm-hmm. And the explicit body is more on Venus de Milo, you know, the new body. Mm-hmm. But it's also the body with all its nipples and genitalia. Mm-hmm. That we're still afraid of looking at somehow. That's, it's our, it's uh, the white patriarchal ma- male. They are censoring, it's a controlling your brain. Like if you read Foucault's History of Sex, he ties it's not only just uh, sex, but it's economic, it's political, it's legal. Mm -hmm. Who controls these branches of legislation Mm -hmm. and education? Mm -hmm. And so I think that the history of this type of filmmaking has always been in response to these questions of who's controlling who and who's controlling what, and where's the money and the power. Right, where's the money and power and how to get it. Um, Also, I think that there is um, changes that, like when I first studied at UCLA, that was Shirley Clark in the 80s, it was very rare. They didn't have that many film production courses. Now there's Bard College, there's Mm -hmm. the New School, there's places you can study. And there will always be a lot of women, but when it comes to festivals and distribution, what are they making visible? How do you make your work visible? This is why I think what is needed to make a movement Mm -hmm. is producing the work, exhibiting the work promoting the work in writing Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, visibility. And that's what the co-op was always about also, right? Yes, yes. And not not just the co-op. Individually you can do it. It's not like you join one organization. Like this uh, DVD is by Revoir, and that's um, published in France Mm -hmm. and distributed... Uh, worldwide, mm-hmm. like in Asia. He mm-hmm. teaches in South Korea. Mm-hmm. He teaches in France. Mm-hmm. So that it visib- it's not just one organization. Mm-hmm. So it's not hidden. It's not hidden. Like I it. like Millennium Film Workshop. Every night they show films. Every mm-hmm. night they have programs. Now, I know that you still do this. You guys have been showing films in gardens. In this the, in the is neighborhood. True. That, I'm a gardener, right. So I love that. I just don't know anyone that wouldn't like to see a film in a garden. (laughs) I like to do documentary portraits. In New York, my first five films that I did for six in L.A. were uh, portraits of what film is, light, movement, locations. Like uh, I loved uh, Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And I loved Los Angeles. Turner's all about the Blue Well, the Pacific Design Center. Mm -hmm. But uh, New York has such, and true to the Lower East Side, such interesting people, like Jack Water and Peter Kramer, La Petite Versailles. And Jack and Peter just did this incredible opera, La Mama Theater. And... uh, I filmed it. I filmed their rehearsals, and I just showed it in their garden with Jack Waters, who filmed the whole thing. It's a feature length. My film was just a portrait of their relationship for 40 years, working together. They have a band. They garden. They exhibit. They distribute. And so this idea of showing the films in the gardens, to me, I think that gets to the core of the idea of community and also not needing permission and not, you know not doing something on your own, but also inviting people to participate. And and it's free. And it's free. And it's free. That's another thing. It's how to keep costs down. Um, And last Friday, there was no rain. Now, (laughs) tonight, I'm supposed to show No Picnic by Phil Hartman, done in 86. It was also in Sundance, and it got an uh, award for cinematography shot on 16, and what happened, it's rained out, it's flooded now. Yeah, that's so the only, you're the di- only drawback. <laughs> yeah, you're the dependent garden. on the elements, but I've done it for years, and I, I'm a gardener. I love composting, and a lot of my last film with Jack and Peter has the 
idea of composting and worms. Mm -hmm. It's part of the cycle of Mm -hmm. death and rebirth and rejuvenation Mm -hmm. So fertilization. Yeah. And so I did hear you talk about um, your specific style of film in a way and what sort of influences you've had. And when we say short films um, in this sense, they're some of them are about a minute long or a little a few minutes. They're very short, but there's whole worlds packed in there. And I remember you talking about um, the idea that no, it's not a beginning, middle, and end. It's more poetic. It's more about poetry almost. Right. What when I studied with Shirley Clark, she showed her one minute films that were in the Brussels World Fair, and. Uh, she said, if you can make a one minute, she would talk to me, uh, and I work very slowly. I have like a build a vocabulary. I shoot, I have uh, threads that go through like, um, what is it exactly I want to say? Like for um, New NYC, I filmed in Trump Tower, and there's only like four frames of Trump Tower. <laughs> and it's outside, and it's the opening, and little did I know he would be, uh, he would be present. I thought it was the biggest scam, but I was in New York <laughs> for the Motion Picture Academy. Yeah. And the film's two minutes, and it just showed at Make Make Believe, which was a sc- uh, exhibition organized and in um, Pennsylvania about putting modern painting and uh, dealing with fragments and my uh, modern art like Andy Warhol Mm -hmm. and films together and they chose that film and I when they wrote I happened to be at the co-op and they said we want this film and I said who's that by and they said you isn't mm Sarah isn't that you (laughs) and I hadn't seen it in the longest time yeah but Jonas Meek has preserved those. Uh-huh. Uh, the wonderful thing is that Jonas preserved those first films I did in the 80s. Yeah. And now they're, you can see them digitally. And now mm-hmm. there's a wider range way of seeing them, mm-hmm. although they're more beautiful on celluloid. The sure. other thing Were is... Were they shot on 8 millimeters, 16 millimeters? 16. 16. And Shirley Clark, the one thing I remember her talking about, Shirley said, if you can, it's like haiku. It's like Japanese haiku. What do you, what's the essence of what you want to say? Mm-hmm. It's, and it's not about entertainment. It's also you have to focus and think and revisit it and know, I have to know, every frame that I'm putting into the film itself mm-hmm. and what it means mm-hmm. and why why it's going there and, what, and why it's going there. why it resonates and why it resonates mm-hmm. and the also it um nyc the film that has trump tower and it's also questioning what is art mm-hmm. in a way it's um uh the soundtrack and uh talks about uh Art and um, art is a product. When you make it a product, it's about marketing, and it's kind of an elite commodity fetish culture. Mm-hmm. You walk into the space; it's how it's lit, and it's who's what boots are wearing, costumes, clothing, and what I want from my own work is to generate ideas, thoughts, discussions. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm going to wrap up, but I really appreciate you talking with us. I know we could talk for a lot longer. Um, maybe yes, maybe well, we'll do a part two. Let's do a part two, okay. and uh, we'll bring in, I'll bring uh, my art core writing so okay. we can do some of the writing. Sure. It's a great. pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking you to so you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.